Six feet apart. Scissors. I don't use these unless I have parents that are around to supervise me. Ah, oh, this is cool. Yeah, I like to play tennis. Tennis is fun. Don't have a tennis racket, but that's okay. Ooh, blocks, yes. And that's the letter H. Mm-hmm. Oh, and a hammer. I love to build things. Kids, don't you love to build things? This is cool. Yep. All right. Kids, hello. It's Mr. Banana. Somebody say, hello, Mr. Banana. Oh, we are talking about Unstuck this month, and we are talking about determination. Determination is deciding it's worth to finish what you've started so kids if you have started something you are beginning to make a cake for your neighbor is it a good idea to stop and not fit no keep going or even if you're done making the cake and you thought and you um, wanted to give it to your neighbor and you just made it and you look at that cake and you're going to want to eat it but you don't give it to your neighbor are you really finishing what you've started. No, you haven't. You have finished when you've actually given the cake or the cupcakes or the cookies or whatever you guys are making out there to your neighbor because uh, that is showing the love of Jesus. And our memory verse comes from Galatians 6, 9, one of my favorite books in the Bible. And the memory verse says, let us not become tired of doing good. At the right time, we will gather a crop. If we don't do what? Give up. If we don't give up, kids, I want to encourage you to be determined in everything that you are doing. Don't give up. Continue to do what you know God wants you to do as you read your Bible. As you pray, does God want you to stop reading your Bible? Does God want you to stop? Praying, no, he wants you to read your Bible and pray every single day. Why? Because we can discover God and we can have a closer relationship with God. Now, we're going to talk about one of my favorite stories in the Bible. But for our first game, we are going to see if you remembered, if you remembered some of those items that I was playing with when I first started when I first started. Now I hope that you guys were paying attention because the, there are some items that I was playing with and let's see if you could remember what those items were. The first item, it was a musical instrument. It's a small musical instrument and I think they play some of these musical instruments in the country of, I mean in the state, excuse me, into the state of Hawaii, right? And that musical instrument is, do you remember? The ukulele, exactly. I don't play the ukulele very well, but you remembered what that object was. Do you remember what the next object was? It was an animal, but what I had in my hand wasn't a real animal, and it had a long snout. Do you remember? It is the elephant, exactly. That is what I was playing with. I think this elephant is pretty cool. It's pretty artsy. And the next object that I was playing with, do you remember what I was playing with? Yes, I was playing with scissors. And what did I say about scissors? If you are going to, excuse me, use scissors, then you need what? Parent permission and supervision because these things can be dangerous. The next object that I was playing with, I think was the tape measure, exactly. And then I remember that, I try to be funny, that comment that I was talking about with you need to be six feet apart from Mr. Banana. Oh, that's pretty far. Yes, if you guess tape measure, you got it absolutely correct. And that ball that I was playing with, was it a football? No, it wasn't. Was it a basketball? No, it was a 
Drum roll, please. It was a tennis ball. Exactly. A tennis ball. I like to play tennis, don't you? Yes. And the next item that I had, I was playing with was the block. And the block had the letter H. Do you know anything that starts with the letter H? Yes, those are good words out there. And the last object that I was playing with was the hammer. So if you remembered hammer, you guys have such a great memory. I like to build things. I hope you, I'm sure you guys like to build things. But again, parent supervision, parent permission, right? So that we can be safe. That was the first game. We have another cool game that we're gonna play with some of our friends. Kids, we have a super fun game. This game is called Shake It Off. Now, I'm gonna <laughs> invite Mrs. Tina and Mrs. Shannon, they're saying, oh no. And oh no is right, because this is the object of the game. I am going to give them sticky notes, and they are going to put 10 sticky notes Anywhere, they can, you can put them on your, you can put them on your arms, you can put them on your shoulders, you can put them in the, you can put them anywhere you want on the upper part of your body. And oh, the upper, object, upper. upper, upper part, the object of the game is to try to shake off as many sticky notes as possible. Okay, <laughs> you're going to shake off all of those sticky notes, put them in very strategic places. Okay, ladies. All right. How many of you kids are going to cheer? for team Mrs. Tina. Yes, I hear those loud cheers back there. You guys are doing an amazing job. And how many of you are going to cheer for team Mrs. Shannon? <laughs> yes, oh, a little, a little louder on that one. That was, that was good, that was good. So how many sticky notes did we, nine, 10. Okay, here we go. Oh, I have 11, I have 11. Here we go, in the count. I'm going to give you 30 seconds this time, okay? okay? When I say go, the object of the game is to shake off all of your sticky notes in five. Count down with me, kids. Four, three, two, it's go time! Oh, they are doing an amazing job here. They are doing an amazing job, okay? Let me know if you've gotten all those sticky notes off the, oh, I don't know if it's working. I don't know if it's working. Okay, all right. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, stop. Stop, stop. Oh, we have one sticky note <laughs> left on Team Shannon and we have Two no. sticky notes left on Mrs. <laughs> Tina. Wah, wah, wah. We have a winner, Team Mrs. Shannon. Let's give Team Mrs. Shannon a round of applause. Yeah. Girls, don't you miss our kids. Yes, so we much. miss you guys so much. much. We cannot wait to see you and to give you big hugs and high fives and we just miss you guys so much. Let's have a time of worship. Get out of your seats and let's give Jesus 10% of worship. No, not 10% of worship. Let's give Jesus 60% of worship. No, not 60%. Let's give Jesus 100% today. Let's wake up our neighbors. Let's wake up our siblings if they're still sleeping. Let's wake up the dog. Let's just have a great time worshiping Jesus. Yes. What's up, everybody? This is the Happy Dance. Are you ready? Because I'm ready. We're going to have some fun. We're going to move around. Shake it, shout. Come on. Up and down. Jump, 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 jump. Up and down. 
the happy dance. I've got joy down in my soul. I'm gonna let this feeling take control. Joy down in my soul to stay. And nothing's gonna take it away. Joy down in my soul. I'm gonna let this feeling take control. Whatever comes my way, I'll be okay. Cause I worship songs. I just love to worship Jesus. I just love to praise him. He is so amazing. Sometimes I will be in my car and I will be driving and I will be singing at the top of my lungs. And sometimes my neighbor, uh, people who are uh, driving next to me and on this side of me, they look at me and think, Mr. Banana, you're crazy because you're just singing so loud because I just love to worship, don't you? Of course you do. Today, we're going to talk about one of my favorite stories in the Bible. And there is one reason why I think this is so special. Now, let's remember what Jesus, let's remember Jesus, right? Those are good, good words to, to um, remind ourselves every day. Remember Jesus. So what did Jesus do when he was on earth? He was um, God in the flesh, God with us, Emmanuel. And when he was here, he was being kind to people. And the Bible says that he was compassionate. And because he was kind and compassionate, he fed people. He healed people of diseases. He, some people even rose from the dead and he was helping people everywhere that he went. And while he was helping people, he was talking about the kingdom of God. He was sharing about God so that people will draw near to God and discover God and have a relationship with God. And so he did all of these things um, with the people, with the disciples as they were here on earth. But there were some people, the Bible says that these people were envious, which is another uh, word for being jealous of Jesus. And they wanted to do away with him. And so what did they do? They put him on trial and they accused him of being God, which he was and which he is. And they nailed him to a cross, which is which makes God very sad, displeases God a lot. But it was on the cross where we can be forgiven of just some of our sins. No, we can be forgiven for all. Somebody say all. 
all of our sins so that when we meet God in heaven, then he, he will receive us as his own children. And then what happened on the third day? What happened on the third day after he was buried in the ground, buried in the tomb? That stone was rolled away and Jesus rose from the dead to conquer sin and death, to prove that he is God, to do. He just did an amazing thing uh, as he rose from the dead and the people were astonished. They were surprised that it just blew everybody's mind. But then he goes to the disciples and he tells them, I've got a task for you. I want you to go into all the world and I want you to tell people about me. I want you to teach them what it, what it looks like to follow me, not just in your home, not just in your neighborhood, but in, in your community and also in your world. And it was a huge task. But what did Jesus say? He said, you can't do it by yourself. I am going to send you the Holy Spirit. And with the power of the Holy Spirit, you can do amazing things. And so we saw that um, people were receiving Christ as the disciples were sharing about Jesus. We saw that there were 3,000. Somebody say 3,000. Yes, 3,000 people that received Christ in one day. And then what happened was all of these people started sharing with each other. If somebody had a need, then another person from this group, from the church, would help somebody else with their need. And we are seeing people do this all over the church. We are seeing people, there are some people, they don't have diapers for their babies. They don't have baby wipes for their babies. But there are people in the church that are saying, I've got diapers, I've got baby wipes. Would you like them? There are people who are hungry in the church. And so there are other people in the church that say, I have food, I have um, clothes that I can give you. And so they were sharing and they were loving each other just like God loves us. Isn't that great news? I love it when I could share some of my possessions and I could share some of my blessings to others. Don't you? Exactly. Well, they were serving so many people, the disciples, <laughs> the people who were following Jesus, they couldn't do it all on their own. So what did they do? They chose people to say, okay, we're serving food, we're waiting on tables, we're waiting and serving people. We cannot do this all by ourselves. And so we're going to appoint certain people to do the tasks for us. We're going to give them the food and they're going to deliver it and they're going to help people. And these weren't the disciples that were in the Bible. This was another group that were being trained to tell people about Jesus. And so these men... They were helping people. They were giving food to people. They were serving people in need. And one of those men is Stephen. Somebody say Stephen. Yes. And Stephen was a man of God. And what did he do? He was telling people about Jesus. He just wasn't showing people the love of Jesus with his actions. No, he was showing the love of Jesus with his Words, exactly. So we see here in the Bible, in the Bible, we see in Acts chapter 2, uh, verse 42, as I was already talking about how the believers were sharing their lives together. The believers in, in verse 42, chapter 2, chapter 2, the believers studied what the apostles taught. They shared their lives together. They ate and prayed together. Everyone was amazed at what God was doing. They were amazed when the apostles performed many wonders and signs. All the believers were together. They shared everything they had. Isn't that great news? They sold property and other things they owned. They gave to anyone who needed anything. Every day they met together in the temple courtyard. They ate meals together in their homes. Their hearts were glad and sincere. They praised God. They were respected by all the people. Every day the Lord added to their group those who were being saved. Now that is great news. That is how God will add more people to the church. When we help each other, when we love each other. So there was a man named Stephen and he was serving people and he was helping people and he was telling people about Jesus and the religious leaders, they did not like that very much. And so they put Stephen on trial. 
And they said, just like they put Jesus on trial, and they said, Stephen, you need to stop talking about Jesus. You need to stop talking about the Bible. We, you need to stop doing that. And do you think Stephen said, okay, I'm going to stop and, tell, and stop telling people about Jesus? No, because Jesus said, go into all the world and make disciples. And so Stephen was very bold to tell them about Jesus. Now, Stephen did it in a very cool way. He started talking about stories in the Bible. He started remembering, remember our game today? He was remembering what the Bible said about Jesus. And the religious leaders could not argue with Stephen. Why? Because he was saying in the Bible, God says this. In the Bible, Jesus does this. And so Stephen kept on remembering what the Bible said. That is why memorizing the Bible is so important. Why? So that when people have an argument about Jesus, we can just remember, no, Jesus said this, and Jesus said that, and Jesus fulfilled this prophecy. And so kids, I want to encourage you, Read the Bible and pray every single day. Apply it to your life. But take some promises that are in the Bible. Memorize them. Memorize them and remember and study the Bible so that when people accuse you of being kind to people, of telling people about Jesus, you can tell them back, well, I cannot listen to you if you're telling me to stop loving people and telling people to stop talking about Jesus because this book says that I need to. And, be, and when you put the word of God in your heart, then you will make God so happy. Well, the religious leaders, they weren't happy. And sometimes when we obey God, people around, there are some people that aren't going to be happy. And so what happened to Stephen? They, uh, they did not like Stephen very much. And just the, and in the same way, they punished Jesus. They punished Stephen. And it is sad news. They threw stones at Stephen and, um, and he died. He was martyred. He died for his faith, which is, which is sad news. But sometimes God will um, allow that to happen. Why? Because he wants people to know how powerful this message is now. Is Stephen still in the ground? No. Stephen is in heaven with Jesus, right? And so that is super good news. I want to encourage you that no matter what, continue to be bold about your faith. Continue to read the Bible and pray. And um, even if there are people that are saying that's not right, you could say no, it is right because the Bible says it's right. Kids, let's pray. Father, I thank you for the Bible, and I thank you that the Bible is always right. The Bible is always true, and there are going to be people out there, they don't like the Bible, they don't like you very much, and that's okay. They will not stop us from telling people about Jesus. And so I pray for our kids that you would continue to encourage them to read their Bible, to pray, to memorize Bible verses so that we can be bold and your love can spread not just in our homes, not just in our communities, and in our state, in our um, nation, and even more than that, in our world. And all of God's people said, Amen. Kids, I love you. I miss you. I cannot wait to be with you guys and to give you hugs and high fives. Uh, but until that day, continue to be safe. Continue to grow in your relationship with Jesus. I will see you guys later.